Hey YouTube, what's up? Sparkles here. And today I'm going to be reading you my dad told me never to go in the basement part 2. Um, I hope y'all like this video. This is the only video I'm posting today because I was really, really tired earlier and I didn't get to do another video. But before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that um, notification bell. And to see more of my videos, and you know, let's get on to it. Okay, I got my phone here, and I'll be reading it on. Okay. I had not seen or heard from my father in over these years, over three years. When his letter, letter, letter arrived. From a sickly, a sickly brown envelope, when his with his distant looping cursive scrawled out on the front with his with my name on it, there were several stamps on the top right hand corner, making it clear that my dad didn't know where I was living. His one sentence requested on a single sheet of paper contained it in an envelope. Flew in the face of all those nights. He would whisper, Don't go to the basement. As he tucked me in for bed, I could remember laying on soft sheets looking up at the man, his face cracked and calloused from hard winds in the fields surrounding our house. He would seem content as he pushed back my blanket, as he pushed my blanket. Under my back and around my leg, look at me with a smile and tell me good night. Then he would stand up, and for a moment, his face would darken, sag with worry and fear. Don't go into the basement. <clears throat> so, when my absent father wrote me a letter telling me to meet him there, I ignored it, crumbled it up, and tossed it away into the garbage. Out of my mind, one more worry in my life could be the one that tears te tears down the dam. Later that day, I was at a friend's house helping him work on some revelations. In his kitchen, he was laying on the floor, head up under the sink, trying to dismantle one of the pipes. He sighed and cursed under his breath, told me he had forgotten a tool from his workshop, and asked me if I could fetch it for him. Without thinking, I said, of course, I would, and asked him where it was. It's in the basement. Then he popped out his head and smiled at me. It was an emotional thing. A crack of his lips and baring teeth. Like he had spent his whole life reading about what a smile was. But had never actually done it before. I stared at him, froze to a spot. His eyes were looking at me. But I don't think he was actually looking at me. I asked him what was wrong. He just stayed there on the floor, smiling that cold smile and looking at me as if I were as if I were nothing. I laughed as if the whole thing was a joke. He simply put his head back on his sink and continued working. Their Norma had taken hold of me, all because of my dad's letter. It had brought memories back up, things I had repressed long ago under the notion that whatever had happened to me in the basement was a part of an overactive childhood imagination. I turned to open the basement door, which was beside the fridge, but I paused for a moment. It came to me. It came to the realization that I had never actually been down into any kind of basement since that night so many years ago. Years of dorm living, shared apartments, and finally the condo I now own. I had insurance that I didn't need to go into a basement. Even my friends' houses or various girlfriends' places, they all seem to neither to either have the... Basement. 
Or, I never really, never had a reason good to go down into one unconsciously. It seems I have followed my dad's advice and shaped my life around it. I quickly glanced over at my friend who was simply, I mean, still happily and bus busily working on the sink. Unaware of my interpretation, I shook my head, tied to forget everything and open the door. Its hinges were old in desperate need of oil. Protesting my by screaming as the door slowly swung open, I looked in down into the darkness. The light from the kitchen revealed a few light wooden steps, but the blackness claimed the rest. I flicked the switch for the basement light but nothing happened. What would y'all, what would your reaction be if your dad told you never to go into the basement? And he, and his friend, your friend, okay, your friend asked you, will you go into my basement and get me, like, a screwdriver or something? I just need a screwdriver to, you know, do this stuff or... A wrench or something like that. Okay, first of all, I would tell him no. My dad told me never to go into the basement because it's creepy and scary and they ghostesses. Ghost, not ghostesses. I was just being funny. But ghost in a stupid basement. I sighed. Curse. Turned to ask my friend where flashlight was, but saw it first on a shelf beside the light switch. I grabbed it and pushed the power button. A brilliant white light bursting in, bursting forth in reply. I took a deep breath and counted to three. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. The stairs groaned beneath my work boots as I went down. The air was dusty and stale. Small particles dancing across my beam of light, I reached the bottom of the stairs and flung my light around. The large basement, which turned into turned out to be pretty empty, turned out to be pretty empty. The stairs themselves were in the middle of the room and under them were boxes. Two metal poles were in the middle of the basement, a few part holding up the floor above them. There was a furnace and a water heater in one corner and an old bicycle in another. Against the wall to my right, I found his small workbench with tools. Hanging on the wall above it, I practically ran to the bench and grabbed his toolbox, not particularly caring at this point whether what he wanted was in there. I was only focused on getting out of there as soon as possible. Upstairs in the kitchen, I had laughed at my worry. But here in the darkness, my breathing became labor labored and shallow as I started to panic. I turned away to the bench and began to head back when the door on the top of the stairs slammed shut, plunging me into almost complete darkness. I didn't even give myself the time to be angry at my friend, who, did, who was clearly toying with me. He had seen my interpretation at the top of the stairs, after all, and came to the conclusion that it was a perfect time to joke around with me. <laughs> then I heard the unmistakable sound of bare feet slapping against the concrete floor. Someone was running towards me. In that moment, I forgot everything. I bolted for the stairs, guided only by the beam of my flashlight. Halfway up the stairs, a hand shot out from underneath and grabbed my foot. I fell, hitting my face on the steps, cried out in pain, fear, and adrenaline, adrenaline shot my body back up, carrying me through the rest of the way. Shoving my body through the door, I stood there in the kitchen for a moment, trying to catch my breath. I turned back towards the basement door, ready to yell at my friend for playing such a cruel joke on me. He was still on the kitchen floor, head buried beneath the sink. 
I called his name. He popped out. He said, I saw the terror. He saw, saw the terror on my face. Asked what happened. There's someone in the basement. He didn't laugh. He could tell I was scared, that I was serious. He got up, grabbed the flashlight, and bolted down the steps. I could, I could stop him with agonized minutes. Passed by. Two agonizing minutes passed by. And then the lights came on. He called my name and said it was okay. I slowly went down. I saw my friend sitting in the middle of the basement. I looked around and knew what he was going to say before he said it. I don't see a door. I don't see a window. No one was down there. Unnerved, anxious, paranoid. I've become all of these things. After that, weeks went by. I would find myself staring at the trash bin near the desk. Unemptied since I tossed my dad's letter into it. I started sleeping with the light on. First, it was the kitchen light, then the one in the hallway. Now, I need one in the bedroom. My friend called me one night and said he was worried about me. I hadn't seen him since that day in the kitchen. Asked me to come out with him, grab some drinks. I looked around my place at the takeout boxes piling up in the kitchen, at the dirty clothes sharing of various places of furniture. I had to get out. I got to the bar early. The place was a typical sports pub, complete with an array of brightly sports event, brightly te lit televisions above the bar, doling out several different sports events for drunken patrons sitting on the bar stools. I found a more quiet spot at the table for two towards the back and sat down, waited. My friend wasn't always so punctual, and then after ten minutes, I grew very weary of watching sports and began to study the people around me. I do that a lot. The place was fairly busy. Sounds of clinking glasses and a dominant Conversation filling the air. Then I heard the door ring, the ring of the bell above the door. Felt cold, not air rush in. The sound of the bar died. Everyone was staring at the woman who had just walked in, including me. I couldn't stop myself. She was the most frighteningly beautiful woman I have ever seen. She was incredibly tall, long limbs, jutting. Out of her slender body, her skin was white and a beacon a beacon in the drab darkness of her, the bar. Her face was almost gaunt, high sharp cheekbones surrounding the abyssal dark eyes. Eyes that were staring right at me. Oh, no, 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 no. If I had a slender, you know, slender man, slender woman looking at me. Oh, honey. No, 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 no. She seemed to float my in my direction. Float. She's a ghost. A demon. In my direction. I was speechless. Unable to find the right words to say. To this giant beauty, she sat down on the empty chair across from me. Like was it, Like it was the most natural thing in the world. She told me. To stop staring and buy her a drink. So I did. I bought a sip of more after that. The night itself was blurry now. Flashes of drink, drinking and cheering. Since conversation, my friend never showed up. Your friend was a ghost. Just remember that. And when I tell you the rest of the stories, yo, we'll see why. I remember coming to to on a bed in a dark place. It wasn't like waking up from a peaceful sleep. It was like being whipped out of a nightmare. My eyes snapped open and I let out a sharp gasping breath. I cannot recall where I was or how I got there, but I know it was a basement. I was in the basement.
Uh, somebody ever kidnapped me and put me in a basement? You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scream. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna do some sounds. That way they know I'm awake. I'm like, ah, I'm in here. Why am I in here? Nobody wanna, you wanna kidnap me? Pizza. And sweet tea. And fried chicken. And, and KFC. You know, I'm fat. I didn't get this double chin from, you know, not eating. It is something about the air underground. Something about how you can feel that the earth surrounds you. That the walls are holding back an avalanche of dirt and rock. My eyes are open. But we're unable. Sorry. To find any sort of light. I was still laying down on the hard mattress. And began to feel around with my hands. My fingers clutched around my cell phone. Turned it on. My eyes screamed out in pain. With the blue glow temporarily blinding me. Well, I tried to adjust to the new light source. I fought hard to remember anything that could help me. The bar waiting for my friend, a rush of wind, a draft hitting my face, a woman. The woman. Come find me. Oh, oh, oh. Again, I glanced back at my phone. There was an alert. Telling me someone has sent me a message. It was from the woman. Come find me. Come and find me. I didn't understand it until I heard someone cry out in the darkness. Where am I? The voice didn't sound like anything like the woman I heard last night. It was frail and childlike. Please come find me. I stood up. Tried to cry. Out. My voice shriveled up and died in the back of my throat. I took my phone and faced it outwards. The blue dull glow, the dull blue glow illuminating only a meter in front of me. My feet were bare and I shivered as they took me across the stone floor. I pictured those cave divers as I used to. When I was a child, the cold water, the cavernous stone walls closing in, I tried to take a deep breath, but I felt as though my lungs had compressed, forcing me to take a take shallow and rapid gulps of precious oxygen. You still haven't found me. The shrill voice glad the E sound at the end of the last word. It cut the cur at the core of me. I couldn't move my feet. Paralyzed with fear. I swung my phone my I swung my phone around my body, trying to see anything that could help me. To my right I saw the shape of some stairs, the way out. I rushed towards them relief the relief flooding through me and drowning any panic I once felt. Then, I, when I bumped into something hard, causing me to fall onto the floor, drawing my phone out in front of me, I screamed as the light revealed a body hanging from the ceiling. It was the woman from the bar. She was slowly swinging back and forth with the noose around her neck. She was smiling at me. An impossibly large grin that extended all the way across her face like she had cut her cheeks open. She opened her mouth. You found me. That's when I passed out. I woke up. New text message received. In daylight was streaming through small windows. There was nobody hanging from the ceiling. I don't remember walking home. I couldn't tell you where the place was. And even if I could, I would never go back. When I got back to my place, I walked to my desk and brought out an envelope and a piece of paper, wrote down my dad's name and the address on the front of the envelope and six words on a piece of paper. I'll see you in the basement. Okay guys, that was part two. Don't um don't wait up for part three because it'll be out tomorrow sometime. So please uh like, comment, subscribe. I don't know anymore. Ah, uh, this week has already been crazy. It's only Wednesday. 
I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.